For the past three years, Thailand has been laying the groundwork to revamp its logistical system, from telecommunications to heavy infrastructure to e-commerce. The country has been pushing ahead with this fundamental in anticipation of a highly competitive regional and global business environment. What is more, for the success of Thailand Eastern Economic Corridor, the Special Economic Zones, the digital economy, and distribution of wealth, the country's logistical system must be effective. One such company that has been expanding its operation in Thailand is DHL. DHL first established its office in Thailand in 1973, and it recently launched its e-commerce platform in 2016. With extensive experience as the world's leading express service provider, more than 40 years express service in Thailand, we asked DHL about Thailand's potential as a regional logistical hub for ASEAN and the Asia-Pacific. As regional connectivity has become a key policy focused for all countries in the region, who better to talk to than one of the world's leading logistical experts based here in Thailand? Join me this week as we welcome Ms. Chananyarak Pecharat, the Managing Director of DHL Express Thailand, as our guest. Well, thank you for receiving me. Welcome to DHL office. Well, thank you very much for giving us the honor. Of course, this is a very important office in Thailand. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to walk uh, Lieutenant General to our office. Well, there'll be a lot of topics that, yes. uh, that I would like to talk to you. And uh, there'll be many questions that I'd like to ask you as well. First of all, would you mind sharing with us who are you, who is DHL. DHL is a world leading logistic company. We're doing a trade facilitator. Basically, we operate mm -hmm. in 220 countries. Globally, we have about 285,000 employees. We run the business at the size of 56 billion euro mm. per year annum. Our business is comprised of four business units together. Mm -hmm. The first one is like post and mail business just like Thailand Post. Second is where you are here. It's an express international logistic, mm -hmm. which we call it time definite. Mm -hmm. It means we want to make sure we send to ASEAN within one day, send Europe within two days. It's a time definite. By using shipping. Thailand as a hub. Yes, by using Thailand as a hub. The third BU that we have is about air freight and sea freight, where you contain bulk load container mm -hmm. and air freight shipping and a big load volume is a bulky volume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The last one is what's so-called is a domestic e-commerce to mm -hmm. support local domestic market in Thailand. So what we are here is international logistic, which well, is truly international company of the world. Well, by the way, how long have you been operated in Thailand? Thailand is 43 years now. Why Thailand? When we think of the business globally, when we're talking about the world of 220 countries, our regional strategies and planning have a plan, what's so-called world connectedness. Mm -hmm. Connectedness is how do we connect the world together of 220 countries, besides passenger travel from one place to the other. They're always shipment, mm -hmm. goods, and delivery that need to travel along. So DHL picked 19 countries. Mm -hmm. as a hub, as a regional hub to really be a spoke and token, you know, where you consolidate the shipment and you send it to the world. For example, Suwannapum, Thailand mm -hmm. has been picked as a strategic location to serve the neighboring countries, uh -huh. such as Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and also ASEAN countries. Mm -hmm. And that's how we determine the readiness of Thailand and the opportunity for growth, and we see the same thing. That's why we established here and uh, contribute to the society for 43 years now. From year one to now, what has been the significant change in, in change. Um, doing business? Yes, it's so many governments that we've been working with. Of course. Yes, and it's a growing country. We have challenge from time to time, but it turned out to be that Thailand is rise across those challenges. Mm -hmm. We face through, you know, some 
old economies and new economy. Let's talking about what happened in the business side. Okay. In the business side, we see that in the old days, you do business, what's so called B2B. Business to, to business. business. So we sell something to a major company and we do international trade by business to business. For example, Apple, everybody used Apple phones, selling business into Thailand. So it's an Apple company, Apple subsidiary, and distributed and Thailand using phone. Mm -hmm. DHL doing logistic payment, or any other electronic company, various industry do B2B business. And it's pretty much manufacturing based. But now the world has been shifted and the global economy, globalizations happen. So now it's what's so-called B2C. Mm. B2C is a business to consumer. What that mm. mean is it's global. If you're talking about the whole world, we're talking about 7 billion potential buyers that using the internet. We see that now mobile become essential. It become, you know, important. Everybody use mobile Mm -hmm. a day spend more time on the mobile they're trading they do line they do facebook they're ready to really make a commerce transactions electronically mm -hmm. and that's where we see the major shift that mm -hmm. coming in we see a phenomenon grow last year we see 2.5 trillion mm -hmm. baht for e-commerce trade mm -hmm. however the trend showing that 80 percent of that is really domestic Mm -hmm. that leave DHL, especially DHL Express International, a great opportunity. You will see the rise of new company, new logistic player. You see Rakuten come to Bangkok. Mm -hmm. You see that uh, Lazada, mm -hmm. AliExpress coming in, many mm -hmm. player coming in, Yamato coming in, mm -hmm. because of the rise of this economy of digital platform that really changed the era of economic in Thailand. What about the government? What have been um, you know the government key policy that you uh, as the you know uh, representative of the world leading logistic company DHL in Thailand see as it is quite quite supportive to to um, the business sectors. Thailand is known as an agricultural country. Mm -hmm. We known as somewhat of productions manufacturing production base yes. that come in Thailand. But we in a developing country. And we've been developing country for certain years now, for many years now. But with the Thailand 4.0, mm -hmm. with the Thailand digital economy, the push from the, it's a national agenda from the government now mm -hmm. that everybody, when I go meet with certain minister or director of a certain ministry, everybody talk about digital. Digital. Yes, it's about new way of doing things. And it's about prosperity to Thai life. Right, to make sure that we lift our economy to be a value-based economy. And this is really, DHL seeing it and I seeing it personally that this is value creating. And it's great to have a government, even though military government, to have a vision mm -hmm. that really foster Thailand to really become internationally and be able to live our life, be able to prosperity, mm -hmm. live our prosperity of the Thai. Mm -hmm. And that will help matching up with the new era in trade economy. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about e-commerce, uh, people need to be digital oriented. Mm -hmm. you know? And government come up many developments, for example, the digital infrastructure that happened and also the digital skills. Mm -hmm. The minister in terms of digital economy and society, right? So that come up. So the development has many progress that we see. Mm -hmm. There are also some challenge that's still left to be done. Just like us, we, we believe we are a good organization, but still we are good to great. Yep. How can we make it better from where we are today? And what's the next? How can we make sure we'll be, you know, leading ASEAN group of country and make sure that we really be a hub of ASEAN? Mm -hmm. Same thing as in Thailand. We are number one here and we'll still continue to be number one. Because mm -hmm. when we're number one, there is stress, a mm -hmm. certain burden, a certain pressure because the market shifts. We need to make sure our people ready, our ecosystem ready, mm -hmm. our process is ready, and make sure the customer that start using our services happy. And when they're happy, mean they trade more, they come in and buy more, eat more transaction, mm -hmm. bigger transaction, bigger impact, good for Thai SME. And I want to help, and basically in Thailand, we want to help SME in Thailand. Mm -hmm. 
because we see a lot of challenge lies on SME mm -hmm. to trade international because our SME is small little one. Some of them doesn't know English. How can I sell overseas? Not even custom regulatory. Mm -hmm. Content digitization is still not easy. These government in particular uh, place a very uh, particular importance on promoting or helping SME as they are very important for, for our, our economy. We have millions of SME in mm. Thailand. And um, how can DHL support SME and startup in Thailand? If you look at from DHL perspective, SME is a core fundamental of the growth path of our business. Now, SME in Thai market is driven our economy. Exactly. If you look at it, it's like 80% is driven by this small little SME that we have. Yes. We have micro SME, we have a medium-sized SME. Now, when we're talking about what are the opportunities out there, we have so many SME, and we have a global economy that coming in as digitization, more buyers that you can reach globally. And we have a great product, a great SME in the market. How can we bring the two to marry together mm -hmm. in a platform whereby don't need to travel, but using the digitization, using the e-commerce platform, and how DHL would help. Okay? So when we look at SME, we did analysis of SME, we do an in-depth study to understand how can we as an international serve local SME. We are very good in serving multinational company, right? Because we, our pro policy procedures and support and speaking and all this were perfect for that. But now when the era of growth coming in is the looming of this e-commerce coming in, mm -hmm. we have a team to make sure that, okay, what's the challenge? Why can't we trade this? They said, Kun Thai, all of all this SME, which is the main economy of Thailand, and Thailand rely on 60% of GDP on export, import and export. But the SME in Thailand, which is the majority of the sellers and merchants that produce goods in Thailand, only 16% of it know how to trade internationally. Mm -hmm. The rest is not yet. And say, why? What's the challenge? They said, okay, the challenge is you need to know the ecosystem to make sure that how can we make sure our business is successful? Mm -hmm. How can we make sure if we go into this new era of digital economy, how can we make sure it's sustainable, mm -hmm. it grows, so it creates the prosperity to tie? So what is the ecosystem you mentioned? Okay, the ecosystem is what are the supporting building blocks that need to happen to make sure this economy is growing, positive, sustainable. So sustainable as a simple way is person who purchase or customer need to have a positive buying experience. Ease of doing business if you are owner of e-commerce. Mm -hmm. If you building the e-commerce a startup, if you're doing this, you need to make sure ease of doing business. You need to be able to reach out to the fund, which government try to provide a startup supporting fund and try to promote digital skill, you know, have digital economy, which I think is already in line. We have mm -hmm. many progresses that happen with this government. It's just that the e-commerce is quite complex. So to get it all done, it's not just government alone. Mm -hmm. It's hand in hand with the private sector. This government also plays a very important, uh, particularly important on um, e-commerce. So in your view, what are those key policy there are a number of initiatives that are coming up from the government, especially you know the uh, the ASEAN group of trade facilitation that happened, the ASEP that happened, mm -hmm. you know, and how did it help? Is you know because when you want to promote goods from Thailand to the world, those policy will help enabling it. But what more important after we have a policies, we have a groups of countries working together on trade bilateral agreement to promote uh, good from Thailand of certain sector to a certain part of the world. More important is after those agreement has been arranged or the implementation, implementation. the implementation of it's down to a real 
ecosystem. You know, for example, if a free trade agreement happened in bringing goods into Thailand, in exempting tax and tax promotions or benefit that we have for the uh, uh, board of investment that we have, which is great program because we have number of programs coming up to promote foreign investor or mm -hmm. overseas investor to register to mm -hmm. trade in Thailand. We'll promote, we come up with EEC, the Eastern Economic, Economic Corridor. Corridor, which is very great opportunity to promote Uta Pao mm -hmm. area and Eastern Seaboard because we have Eastern Seaboard very successful. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, how can we make the next era of successful? Because Eastern Seaboard was successful in the beginning stage already, but what's next? Mm -hmm. So today, digital economy, I personally, or we in the HL always think about beyond ourselves, mm -hmm. beyond today. What is it? What do we need to do to get ourselves ready? Same as the government. So we see that the government has this vision, we're gonna make this EEC, we're gonna make this special economic zone. What important is really how can we get the cross-border trade mm. working smoothly, faster, more efficient? That's not the key. Mm -hmm. Because you know the e-commerce growing about 12% in Thailand, but cross-border growing at 25%. So if we can capture both e-commerce and cross-border trade, because EEC, Special Economic Zone, the trade policy, the agenda is already there. Now, how can you make the implementation happen? I'll give an example. If you're gonna create aviation hub, mm. you have a BOI, get the foreign investor coming in, will lift you the tax, will provide you this facilitation, they agree to register. Hub of ASEAN, hub of aviation's happen. But what next after that? Because if I register as hub, I wanna make sure I can bring in spare part goods and can support all over the world because a hub or aviation hub or industrial uh, digital station or robot or uh, and uh, or what did they call uh, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. happen it's not only happen it's the next what's next what's beyond this mm -hmm. is really how can you make sure the spare part of Airbus or Boeing coming in and out mm -hmm. easy how can you make it simple? Can you make it simple? Can you make it fast? Can you make it efficient and cost effective? If this is happening on the ground, beyond the BOI, beyond the register of the company, and getting to the economic zone, supporting them to the ground of how to get goods and passengers across the country, simplify those process, digitize it, make sure that everything can be authorized, you know, on when you bring goods in, what's the custom receipt? What's the e-payment? You know, what are the e-paper lists that we could have? Some of this is still pending mm -hmm. to be implemented in Thailand, and that would help sufficient in terms of cost of logistics mm -hmm. and bring Thailand to make sure that we are attractive for the investor to come in, and that will help FDI against other neighboring country. So it's the co it's the collaboration. It's a integration, integrated, interlink between ministry mm -hmm. that would help us a great deal on this one. SME in Thailand has a very short life cycle but with, with the new policy under this government, um, perhaps with the um, support from DHL, it will help you know, the SME to have a, a sustainable you know, life. The education is the key, mm -hmm. and we could simplify that by having this building block of, you know, SME trading internationally. If we create this forum and make sure we continue this forum with every building blocks that SME need to know from the beginning, how can you make sure we create values in your product mm -hmm. from packaging, from value added, from descriptions, you know, and how do you put it in English context or video and all this where attract to the buyers overseas. Because buyer overseas, they read they analyze, they're not only picture, but buyers in Thailand love to see picture. We don't read that much, right? But the story of Thai product, 
the Thai handicraft has great values and they're willing to pay. So this part, the government could do more. Mm -hmm. And once you do all this, we could come in and help and educate them mm -hmm. in terms of what are the opportunity for you to trade in Japan? What are the opportunity for you to trade in US and Europe? And we know what type of goods go into those countries. So we can add values and share with them on FTA, WTO and regulatory of custom clearance regulatory in each country. Mm -hmm. And we can share them what can they benefit out of this FTA. You know, so all this is a building block. And also last but not least is a payment. Mm -hmm. Because if you can ship, you want to get the money. And you want to get the money that easy to exchange and pay and integrate with the e-payment system. So DHL is beyond logistic. We'll work with the aggregator, payment aggregator. So we can pay by Lie, we can pay by Facebook, we can pay by mobile banking, we can pay by prompt pay, we can pay by counter services. You can choose any Visa, credit mm -hmm. card, we can pay all over the world. So we make simple logistic and integrated payment and integrated custom clearance procedure to make sure that it's expedited. All we need the support from government is negotiate sector, trade, sectorial, a certain things we want to get from Thailand. Let's negotiate in and out. Mm -hmm. And then bring that down to implementation at custom department. And make a promotions happen, known to Google that Thailand is good at this. If you've done all this ecosystem, imagine how much we can export Thai product to the world. And we'll become half of Asia. Well, as the um, world leading logistic company, if I ask you to, to um, pinpoint the um, strength and potential of Thailand. So when we look at country like Thailand, we look at many dimensions. For example, from regulatory purposes, mm -hmm. from foreign investment, from skills and labors, in terms of leadership, do you have a good leadership that can work with the international company? Mm -hmm. We look at safety, security of the country. We look at government stability. We look at the policies and the vision the government have. So now when we look at all this, we come up with the score and rating. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're determined to be here for long term. Well, thank you very much for sharing your view. I feel, you know, being educated thank by you. talking to you today. Thank Likewise. you once again. Likewise. Likewise. Hearing from the experiences of DHL today, there is no question that logistical proficiency will be the key test for Thailand's future competitiveness. But this isn't just for the success of Thailand SMEs, DEEC or Special Economic Zone. It will also be a key factor determining Thailand's participation in regional and global investment and commerce arrangement. Whether it is to support the ASEAN economic community, the One Belt One Road initiative, or any upcoming regional trade framework in the wider Asia region, Thailand will need to continue with the current momentum to advance its logistical framework. At the same time, it is important to remember how logistics is a crucial ingredient for the Thailand 4.0 era as well as the country's sustainable development agenda. Thank you for watching The Insider. We hope to see you again next week. Sadi Club. <laughs>